Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Last week, I reviewed an affordable conveyor belt 3D printer, which only cost around $600. Normally, a 45 degree belt printer is good for printing long models, but for printing small models or doing automated continuous printing, it would be better to use a 90 degree setup. This week, I will test out a belt conversion kit from Additiva 3D. They have both 45 and 90 degree kits for the under three. I will test out the 90 degree kit first for two reasons. First, I want to find the cheapest option available to make a conveyor belt printer, as this kit is $250 and the 45 degree kit is $320. Second, the assembly of this 90 degree kit is easier than the 45 degree kit as you only need to modify the base by adding the conveyor belt on top of the heated bed. The whole gantry remains unchanged. but. These two kits share many common components, so it would be easier for everyone to follow if I start with this 90 degree kit and do the 45 degree kit in the coming week. Besides the conversion kit, we also need an Ender 3. Since my existing Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro are heavily modded, instead of buying a brand new Ender 3, I just bought two refurbished Ender 3s from Comgrow, which only cost $109 each. So the total cost to build this 90 degree conveyor belt under three will be $359. I would like to thank Additiva 3D for sending me this kit to review and to Scott Meredith for his detailed assembly tutorials and slicer profile. With that, let's get started. The metal parts in yellow are three sets of brackets and a front plate. It also came with two rollers and two rods to support the rollers, four mounts with bearings to mount the rods on the frame, and two 1020 aluminum extrusions to support the heated bed. All bolts and nuts we need for this upgrade are included. They are mainly M3 to M6 bolts and some T-nuts. There is also a longer stepper motor cable and micro SD card extension cable. When looking at the finished picture of the kit, it shouldn't be too difficult to put this together. First, I will put the Ender 3 together and do a simple test print to make sure it's working fine. I will not go over the detailed assembly steps for the Ender 3, as I have made an Ender 3 Pro assembly video before, and it's pretty much the same as the Ender 3. This so-called refurbished Ender 3 is literally brand new. However, this brand new condition may not apply to all refurbished machines, as I have bought a refurbished CR Tennis Pro V2 for testing out the OMG A2 extruder and an Ender 5 Pro for Core XY and linear rail upgrades to make it an Ender 7. Those machines were not as brand new as this Ender 3, but they still worked great. Okay, the assembly of the Ender 3 is done. Let's print a calibration cube and Benji with this refurbished brand new Ender 3 so we have a baseline of what kind of print quality we can get, so that after the conversion is done, we can expect to see the same print quality. This calibration cube and 3D Benji both look really nice. This is almost the best you can get from a stock Ender 3, and we will see if we can still get the same quality after this upgrade. The installation of this kit is very straightforward. The installation menu is well written, and most people with some 3D printer upgrading experience should be able to put this together in about an hour. Instead of going through every single detail, I will just go through the process real quick and spend more time talking about what issues I ran into and how to fix them so you can have a rough idea of what to expect when you put it together. First, you need to remove the Y-axis from the Ender 3, as we will no longer be using this extrusion. For the stepper motor, you can install it as a dual Y-axis, but we will talk about this later. The screen also needs to be removed, as well as the end cap of the extrusion. As the conveyor belt itself is longer than the stock Ender 3 frame, we need to install these four brackets to extend the Y-axis. Just use screws and T-nuts to install at the four corners and then you can put the rods inside the rollers. Next, put on the belt and secure them to the extended brackets we just installed. For the heated bed, you need to put it on top of these two extrusions and put it under the belt. If you are using an Ender 3 Pro for this mod, you should be fine, but I am using an Ender 3 without the magnetic bed, which is thinner. That makes my bed actually lower than the belt. 
Even if I remove the Z-Limit switch, the gantry will hit the stepper motor mount before the nozzle touches the bed. So I just printed two 5mm bars to raise the bed to make it work. Then, install the stepper motor that came with the kit, the wheel, and the timing belt. Finally, mount the screen back to the frame. For the stock stepper motor, there is a place behind the screen for you to mount it to make a dual Y axis. But the problem is, the stock motherboard or most motherboards just have one connector for the Y axis. You need to get a splitter cable in order to install both motors. Since I don't have one, I will just use one motor. Bed leveling is similar to what you do to a printer without a bed leveling sensor. Adjust the knob underneath or lower the Z limit switch to bring the nozzle closer to the bed. Since this belt is like a cloth, the surface is soft, and I need to move the nozzle really close to it for the print to stick well. For the belt alignment, it's similar to aligning the belt of a belt sander. Loosen the bearing bracket and position it at the center. You may change the tension of one side if your belt is shifting to the left or right, and loosening the set screws on the roller could also help you to align it perfectly. A good way to test it is to move your y-axis by a few thousand millimeters using the move axis menu on the screen. After a few rounds, if it is still at the center, it should be fine. Okay, the belt alignment is basically done. Let's try to print a calibration cube and make sure everything is working. The cube looks the same, but when I measure the length on all sides, the x and z are fine as we are using the same gantry without any changes. However, as the y-axis was replaced by the conveyor belt, the length of the side is too long and is now 21.3mm instead of 20mm. I should either tighten the belt or adjust the step value of the y-stepper motor. The problem is, if I tighten the belt to increase the tension, the stepper motor starts to skip, as it's not powerful enough to move the tight belt, and this will result in a layer shift. So, I will decrease the step value instead. I will save the new value and reprint the cube to see how it looks. This time it looks fine and the dimensions are accurate and are pretty close to the one printed by the stock Ender 3. I also printed another Benchy using this new setup, but the bed didn't stick as well as the stock sticker sheet. Besides that, there is a layer shift here, so the single Y-axis stepper motor may be another issue. I will make a stepper motor splitter cable and install another motor to drive the belt. This kit came with another stepper motor, which is a NEMA 1734mm with a rated current of 1.3 amps, but I will just use a set of NEMA 1740mm motors with a rated current of 1.7 amps. In order to get the best performance from these motors, I will increase the voltage reference from 0.9 to 1.5. This may be a little bit too much, but I will keep this current to make sure they hold enough torque unless I find that the motors are running hot. I will leave a link in the description if you want to know more about this. As the two motors are installed in opposite directions, I need to flip one set of the wires to make them turn opposite to each other. After the second motor is installed, there is not enough space to mount the screen, so I also printed a plate to move it up. For the adhesion issue, the calibration cube actually sticks pretty well, so I won't apply glue on this belt and use blue tape to print the Benchy again. After the layer shift issue is fixed, the Benchy looks as good as the one printed by the stock Ender 3. I will try more prints before I decide to do anything with the bed adhesion. The biggest advantage of this 90 degree belt kit is that it allows you to print multiple models or loop the same model continuously. First, for printing multiple models, there are a few options. You can get a Raspberry Pi, but due to chip shortage, a 4GB Raspberry 4, supposed to cost around $50, is now only available from Sculpers and may cost you $200. If you can get one, install Octopi and use the Continuous Print plugin to send multiple jobs to the printer. It will print it one after the other, and you can also change the count number to print the same model as many times as you want. The second option is to pay $150 to buy the Simplify 3D Slicer, which includes the multiple process feature and allows you to combine multiple models in one single print job. The instructions are included in the manual of this kit. The last option is free. You can use Cura, set the Y-axis to as long as you need, use the print sequence to make it print one at a time and put all models on it. After you do that, there is a bug in Cura. 
your z height will be decreased and unable to slice, and you have to change the z height to another number. Then, change it back to 250, and it will go back to normal. But, you need to spend some time to arrange the model manually, according to the print sequence randomly generated by Kira. This free option still works, but requires some extra work. Second, for continuously printing the same model, Scott also talked about how to use Marlin M808 to loop the G code. In simple words, to start a loop, we can add the M808 command. The syntax is M808 followed by L. For example, if we just type M808L, it will be an infinite loop, and it's going to keep printing the G code again and again until you stop the print or use the new and repeat loops option on your LCD screen. If you put M808L3, it will loop the G code three times. At the end of the printing G code, put another M808 to end the loop so the printer will loop everything between these two M808 commands. I made some sample G code files, sliced with the Cura and Idea Maker slicer, and put M808 to make a loop. I put the download link under the description so you can see the exact location where you should put the M808 to make a loop. In order to use this loop feature, you need Marlin 2.0.8, or later, all you need to do is enable one line of G-code in configuration ADV.h. Since I didn't use the firmware from Additive of 3D, I also put a link of the firmware I compiled that works well on my stock Ender 3, which uses a Creality V4.2.2 32-bit board with non-silent A4988 stepper drivers. It has no BL touch and no filament sensor. I will now do more test prints. Instead of printing a fancy Eiffel Tower, I will do some loop printing, as most people interested in this setup generally would like to do continuous printing or small batch production. I will do some loop printing using one of my sample looping G-code files. I will start with a few calibration cubes. You can compare the results with the one printed by the stock Ender 3, and they look pretty much identical. Then, I will print this disc for a jar. I switch to a 0.6mm nozzle to speed up the printing time, and it will take around 6.5 minutes to print one disc. I have printed quite a lot of them without any issues. The belt is sticking okay. I actually don't want it to stick too well or it will be hard to remove from the belt automatically. So, I will just keep my setup this way. Let's talk about what I think about this upgrade kit. For the price of $250, if you get a refurbished Ender 3 to make a conveyor belt printer, the total will cost less than $400, so the value is hard to beat. The kit came with six metal brackets, rods, rollers, the belt, and everything you need to turn your Ender 3 into a conveyor belt printer. It did deliver what it promised. The assembly is straightforward if you have some 3D printer modding and upgrading experience. The manual is well written, and you can basically put everything together by just following the manual. However, this is a DIY kit made for the Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro, and Ender 3 V2, but the specifications of these three printers are slightly different. For example, the print bed of the Ender 3 has no magnetic sheet, so it's thinner than the Ender 3 Pro magnetic bed. You may need to 3D print something, add some spacers, or replace the stock leveling springs with stronger ones to raise the bed to make it fit. Second, if you need to install dual Y-stepper motors, the kit didn't come with a splitter cable. The screen also will not fit if both motors are installed, so you need to figure out some of these issues by yourself. The belt adhesion is still not very consistent. I can print 100 parts with flat bottoms in a short printing time, or a small batch of calibration cubes without any issues. But, when I try printing a 3D Benji, I can only print successfully with blue tape in order to keep it sticking to the belt. If not, it's going to fall at some point after printing for around one and a half hours. After I align the belt as well as I could, it can move over 100,000 millimeters without an issue, which is not bad but you will eventually need to realign it sooner or later. I can use it to print 100 of the same models without an issue, but if I need to print 500 parts, I may need to realign the belt in the middle of the print. In conclusion, if you want a hobbyist conveyor belt printer without breaking the bank and are also willing to do some tinkering, getting a kit like this is really fun. 
It's similar to some DIY conveyor belt kits you might have seen online, which use 3D printed parts to extend the frame and a PVC pipe as the roller. For this kit, all brackets and rollers are metal. It came with all the bolts and nuts you need for the upgrade. Most importantly, Additiva 3D also has a Facebook support group. So in case you have issues, you are not alone and can probably find answers from someone's post. But if you expect this kit to turn your 3D printer into a mini factory so you can set it, forget it, and let it print nonstop weeks after weeks, this will not be the case, as you really cannot expect that at this price point. When I first saw this kit, I had a question, like many of you do as well. MakerBot has an automated print bed patent, and many people say that other manufacturers can only make their conveyor belt printers print at 45 degrees because of this patent. But when I looked into the details, they actually patented the automated build process. This does not only apply to 3D printing, it applies to any machine that multiplies or sequentially fabricates objects that can also remove the objects automatically from the conveyor belt as the belt moves. So if this is the case, no one can make conveyor belt printers, no matter if they are printing at 45 or 90 degrees. As long as they are capable of printing more than one object at a time, and the object can be removed automatically while the belt is moving, it still violates the patent. If you have anything to say about this, please share in the comments down below. Anyways, I put a link to the Additiva 3D under the description, as well as the link for the wonderful instruction videos from Scott Meredith and his Edge of 3D YouTube channel. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. My brother and I make a new video every weekend, so check out my channel on Mondays and you'll see something new. See you next week.